Hi you guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Caitlin for those of you that are new here and if you're not, welcome back. Thank you so much for being here. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you a yin yoga practice. So if you've been with me the last couple of days of no studio, no problem, practice with me. I wanted to share with you something a little more gentle, a little more calming and grounding in contrast to the active practices that I've been sharing in the other videos. If this is new to you. You hold the postures anywhere from three to five minutes, just depending on the nature of the posture. The point of yin yoga is to work the connective tissue, the fascia in the body, and place relative stress on the joints. So not so much flexibility and um, lengthening the muscles, but rather placing intentional stress and stretch on your joints. When we move through our postures, I like to preface that you will find some discomfort, and that is intentional. There is absolutely no pain though in the practice, so please tread lightly as we navigate through today's class. If you find that you're running into to discomfort, let alone pain, please come out of the posture, back out earlier, and then you come back into the posture only as you are ready. Final thing that I would like to share with you is that there are three principles or tattvas that are going to support you in this practice. The first of the three principles is that you are to find the appropriate. Now, since I can't actually see you, my hope is that you will take personal responsibility in finding the appropriate. You'll know that you're in the appropriate amount of sensation of the posture because it is a little unusual uncomfortable, but it is bearable. It's breathable and it is sustainable for that three to five minute window. Some sensation, yes. Some discomfort, yes. That is a-okay, but there's absolutely no pain, numbing, or tingling in the body throughout the duration of the hold. Please no numbing, no tingling in the body. If that kind of sensation starts to arrive, something somewhere is being pinched and the blood can't properly flow. Please back out and give yourself more slack. The second tattva or principle that will support you in the practice is that you are to find stillness, right? You are to set intention or resolve to be still for the duration of the pose. What you want to avoid is this constant, I'm adjusting to readjust, fidgeting and wiggling and navigating through the body. You find your pose, you drop into it, and we hold it for the time given. A little segue from that second principle. If you find that throughout the hold, your body is sending you the invitation that says, hey, take the pose deeper, I have a new appropriate. Take it a little bit deeper and then set intention to be still in that new depth. The other side of that token, however, is if you find throughout the hold that you need more slack, you were in your appropriate, but it's no longer sustainable, you back out, give yourself more slack, and then you find your new appropriate. So there's no, say, super glue in the body. You find your appropriate, you find your still point, and you're perfect. The third and final tattva or principle in the yin yoga practice is that you are to hold for the duration given. And as I've said a couple of times, a three to five minute window, but if you find that, again, you need to to back out or go deeper, you do those things. I am merely your guide, but I assure you that you are your best teacher because you know what you're feeling in your body right now. And one last thing, if you like this video, then please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'm uploading videos every day while I'm not teaching public in-studio classes. I hope that you guys enjoy and let's practice. So we'll start our yin yoga practice with a supine pentacle. You'll recline all the way down onto the back body. Let your arms and legs go long. The feet can flop out to the sides, the arms go long. Shoulders become soft and heavy. And then if you'd like, with supine pentacle traditionally, the arms rise up above the head and the backs of the hands come to the floor. Super important with supine pentacle that you go as mellow as you possibly can. Soften through your elbows your knees, your fingers, and your toes. Once you find your appropriate in your pentacle shape, allow the eyes to close, awareness to draw inward. Before we begin to Focus the mind on any one thing. Start to consciously listen to your surroundings. Tuning in to any fluctuation of sound.
becoming attached to any one sound, just receiving it exactly as it is. You're beginning to become aware of the world around you, all that's happening without you. You draw the awareness to the inner body. You feel into the grounding points of the physical body, the backs of the hands, the shoulders, the weight of your skull. Feeling into your shoulders, your sitting bones, where your calf muscles brush the floor. Bring your concentration all the way down into the heels. Just as there was no blind reaction to sound, there is no blind reaction to sensation in your body. Simply building up the awareness slowly and calmly. Well, we can all acknowledge that distractions are incredibly real things. To the best of your ability, you stay focused on the task at hand physical points in the body. And we start to layer on awareness of the breath. Initially, we practice anapana, which is the observation of your natural breathings. We'll choose a specific point. Today, we find the nostrils and the space just between them. You simply follow the natural breath in and out through the nose. If and when you find your mind wandering off, and you notice that you're in this trance life or fantasy state, with kindness you anchor the mind back into the natural breeze. So developing the relationship with the concentration in your breath. You'll gradually begin to manipulate the breath work as you deepen your inhale and lengthen your exhale. Imagine that you're looping your breath from the nostrils down to the navel. It's followed by this white light of purity. With your exhale, the navel back up to your nostrils. Your inhalation drawing this energy of white, pure light in through the nostrils, down your center column, expanding your navel. With the exhalation, the white light loops from the navel and kindly departs to the nostrils. 
flossing the breath, nostrils down to the navel, white light of purity circulating, and the navel back up to the nostrils, its white light radiating out through you. Keeping the lower half of the body precisely as it is, heavy and lax. Collect your hands just in front of the chest and hold a globe of energy between the palms. It's this white ball of glowing energy between your two hands. The hands are about six to eight inches away from one another. You'll begin to feel a little bit of heat circulating between the palms, the fingers. And in this white ball of light, you plant your fears, you plant your worries. And in the current state, you might begin quite big, drawing coronavirus or isolation, any fears or worries, nothing too big, nothing too small, hold them between your hands in this white ball of energy. As you acknowledge your current fears, your current worries, and you hold them in your hands, you practice the action of letting go. So you cleanse the exhale, we press the energy ball away. Take a deep breath into the belly. Open mouth, exhale, throw the ball of energy away from you. And you let go, creating spaciousness in the mind and in the heart. You shake out the hands, rid yourself of the energy, let it go. As you shake out the hands, begin to awaken the feet. You take a full body stretch, feeling a little bit lighter, a little more connected to your present moment. Press your low back into the mat, hug your knees into your heart, and start to rock and roll the length of your spine. Rock and roll, rock and roll. Do that only as many times as it feels good, finding a cat spine, shoulder blades away from the back body. Once you've gained enough momentum, take a cross at the ankles, meeting the upright in Sukhasana, easy seated pose. Collecting your hands at your heart, soft bow of the chin towards the chest. Only if you are comfortable, let your eyes close. The open quality in the heart, the calm quality in the mind, I invite you to take the next few moments to establish your sankalpa, your intention. What are you looking to dedicate your precious time to throughout the practice? Take Hakini Mudra, keeping the finger pads together. You draw a smaller, more concise ball of energy between the palms. And imagine that your intention is circulating and swirling between your two hands. To expand on that visualization, what color does your intention hold? What temperature does your intention hold? Nowhere else to be but here. Nothing else to do but be here now. Big Anjali Mudra, bring the base of the palms together. And one more time, we cleanse the exhalation to share the vibration of our personal efforts and intentions. 
all the way down to your belly, breathe in deeply. Open mouth, release. You slowly open the eyes, receiving the colors, the shapes, the textures around you. And then we'll make our way into our first yin yoga pose. To begin the practice, we'll start the focus on the feet. And I like to start with a little bit of dynamic movement. So we'll take an interlace for the toes, crossing your right ankle over your left leg. Interlace your five left fingers between your five right toes. Once you have the fingers interlaced, I'm literally holding hands with my foot. You do a couple of rotations of the right five toes. Sitting tall, stay lifted in your heart and your crown. And then switch the direction of the right rotations, right toe rotations, I should say. Do a little back bending and forward bending of the toe joints. Back bending and forward bending. And then find a little shake. Come to stillness, spread through your five left fingers. And do that again, a little shake and spread. So I'll begin that cycle again, just bear with me rotations of the right toes and it might become a little bit bigger through the arch through the ankle and opposite direction for the rotations back bending forward bending back bending and forward bending little shake spread through fingers spread through toes and again a little shake spread through fingers, spread through toes. So you can feel the difference of that. Let go of the interlace, do a little massage with the thumbs, run that along the arch, your ball mounds, your heel. Just a little bit of self-touch, self-love. And once you feel satisfied with the self-massage, come to standing on your feet in Tadasana. As you come to standing on your feet, Present your palms forward, feet are about hips width distance, and just feel the echo of that through the length of your right leg. You might close the eyes, feel some radiation through the right hip. I can almost feel change through my right shoulder, right fingers, and the right side of my neck. The prana radiates upward. So let's balance that out, come back down to your seat, cross your left ankle over your right thigh. And interlace your five right fingers between your five left toes. Since you have that kind of interlace holding hands with your left foot, do the rotations. You can start small, slow, and gradually increase. Assess your posture, stay lifted on the heart. Maybe the gaze softens, up to you. And then switch the direction of your rotations. Patiently and diligently we work. And a little back bending on the toes. I enjoy the pulses, a little forward bending on the toes. One more time, back bending and forward bending. And then final, you do a little shake. Find still points, spread through your fingers. Take a little shake and still points, spread through your fingers. And then we'll loop that again. Rotations of the toes. You might become a little more courageous in your movements and feel that through arch, heel, ankle and then switch the direction. Back bending through the toes, forward bending. And then shake, bear with me, I promise. And then spread through the toes. This is totally worth it for our broken toe preparation. Again, little shake and spread. And let go of the interlace, self-massage, down the arch, your heel, ball mounts, even the toes, little squeezes, some self-touch. And then one more time, come standing upright in Tadasana, just so you can explore and experience the felt change. I like to rock a little bit of weight forward and backward, feel into the ball mounts, the heels, and find stillness, take your Tadasana, soften the gaze, and just receive. Making your way back down to the ground. First yin pose, now that we are prepped and ready to go through the feet, let's start with our broken toe pose. Tucking your toes under from a tabletop. Walking your hands back towards your knees, sitting bones to the heels. Now right here is progression one. So you might choose to stay right here with hands on your mat if it is safe and appropriate. 
You lift up for full expression, stack your shoulders above your hips. From there, do a double check, tucking your pinky toes underneath. And then for me, I like to take Dhyana Mudra. Your right palm rests in the left, thumbs connect. Your right hand is representing your truth, and your left hand is representing the ego. Your truth sits on top of the ego as we hold the duration of the pose. Depending on your comfort level, you steady the gaze on something external, so that's your drishti, a focal point, or let the eyes close and draw inward. Duration of the pose is two minutes. Our timer is on. Recall our three principles. First, you are to find your level of appropriate today. Not your last practice, not where you thought you'd be, but your appropriate today. Once you have found your appropriate, you are to set intention to stillness. So avoiding the adjusting to readjust the constant fidgets. Third and final, you are to hold for the duration given. And in this case, we are one minute in and we have one minute to go using our yin yoga practice to hone in on the skill of patience, taking on the discomfort with a sense of grace and steadiness. There's no blind reaction, minimizing resistance, maximizing the felt experience of being present. And to release what has shifted, if you'd like to join me in a cleansing exhalation, all the way down to the belly, breathe in sweetly. Open mouth, expelling stale spent air. Dropping the chin towards the chest, please take your time with transition. Totally normal to feel achy and some resistance as you release. Once you find tabletop, hover the feet, Point your toes, flex your feet. Do that one more time. Point and flex. And ankle rotations in both directions. Gentle tappings, tops of the feet, down onto your mat. And to counter that, we find an ankle stretch. So we still maintain a tabletop, tops of the feet press down, inner knees together, inner arches together. Right here is first progression if this is enough for you today. If you'd like full expression, walk your hands back and take a seat on your heels. Now notice that my sitting bones are right on the heels and the tops of the feet are still down. Right here is expression two. If you'd like to move on, kickstand your fingers behind your toes. Make sure you keep heart space lifted, gaze lifted. There's no curving into the back body. Option to then lift one knee, second knee. If both knees are giving you the green light, then lift both knees at the same time. Here is your third expression. If you'd like the full expression, again, it's safe, appropriate, all that good stuff. Take hands to knees one and then two, incorporating a little bit of balance into the hold. Recall the collarbones are broad and the neck is long, the gaze is steady. Another two minute window, our timer is on. I'll let you know when we are 60 seconds. Hmm. Now as your body is acclimated with the shape, Make sure that you're moving the breath. You can choose to stick with the deepening action of your inhale, lengthening action of your exhale, or layering on the ujjayi breath. It's a soft constriction that you place in the back line of your throat. Often it is compared to an ocean-like wave. There's some texture and vibration that will help to anchor the busy mind. It sounds a little something like this. You follow that sound, its ebb and its flow, giving the mind something to focus on. 
Right now, we are halfway through our ankle stretch. To send the signals of the brain into the body that you're moving momentarily. If you'd like to join me in a cleansing exhalation, deep belly breath in. Open mouth, expel. And practice your patience as you release from the shape. Lower the shins, the knees. Totally normal to feel a little bit of achiness through the ankles. Walk forward, tabletop. Do you find tabletop? Do a hover of the feet and notice the temperature change as fresh blood starts to pump into the ankles and the toes. It's incredible, really. Once you feel that temperature start to fluctuate, flex your feet slowly and kick out through your heels. Press through the ball mounds and spread your toes. And come to that point, curl the toes in. With a little more spaciousness, flex the feet, spread the toes, and then point. Ankle rotations in both directions, gauging three times one way and three times in the opposite. Gentle tappings, like wet noodles, tap the tops of the feet down onto your neck. Nice work. So then sweeping the legs out in front of you, we'll take our first forward fold. This is butterfly pose. In your yin practice, it's a fairly wide stance from the heels, knees to the hips. You want to see this true diamond shape. And this will also drop us not only into the hips and the spine, but the hamstrings as well. So we have three target areas that we're working through uh, the fascia, the connective tissue in the body. Now, you can choose to stay upright. For some of us, this is enough. This is the appropriate level. For others, if it is appropriate and sustainable, consider the rounding of the back body. In yin, all of your forward folds are round spine like cat pose. If, however, there is sensitivity in the sacrum of the low back, I would highly encourage you just to stay upright or you take the fold with a flat back. You take care of yourself first and foremost, taking personal responsibility in that realm. If your back body gives you the green light, A-OK, -okay, you round your spine, so by tucking the chin towards the chest and then lowering down. Speaking to those of you that have a little more depth in the forward fold, your hairline or the crown of your head rests in the arches of the feet. It's a three minute window. So consider that when you are finding your appropriate for butterfly pose. Option to then slide the hands, forearms, and elbows underneath calf muscles. Our timer is on three minutes in total. With this posture, I am just going to let you go and leave you in silence for the next two and a half minutes. If and when you find a mind wandering, please utilize the tool of your conscious breathings in through the nose and out through the nose.
And then to release what has shifted, cleansing the exhale from the bottom of the belly. Take a full breath in. Open mouth, soften into your fold. Free the hands and arms if they're bound. Press your palms into the floor. Articulate the spine as you roll up. You want to intentionally feel the shoulders, the neck, and the crown of the head is the very last thing to lift. To come to that, keep a bend in your knees. Bring your feet to your mat a little bit wider than your hips. Bear the weight in your hands behind your hips, outer shoulders back, inner shoulder blades in. Lifting the heart and the gaze as you windshield wiper the legs. Hang with me for three. Washing it away with some dynamic movement. Here's two. And one. Let's go belly down for Sphinx Pose. Once you find your belly down, you have the hip points pressing into your mat, the tops of the feet pressing into your mat. Let's get really curious about the feet. Dropping the awareness into the toenails. Press all 10 toenails down into your mat, even tiny little pinky toe. That will help to wrap your inner thighs up. This is super important. Get your head lower to the ground and lengthen your tailbone down to your heels. I'm going to say that twice because that will keep you out of crunching into the low back. Lengthen your tailbone down to your heels without negating the press of the toes. Once you have the length of the tail, then slide your elbows just beneath your shoulders. Pressing into the palms, the heart is lifted, the head is lifted. The target area in Sphinx Pose is the lumbar spine and sacrum, so that is where you will be feeling relative stress. Discomfort, yes, but nothing is painful, numbing, or tingling. To those of you that find this to be too much, please modify it altogether. You take a crocodile pose. The forearms press into your mat. You can keep the neck and head lifted or bring the forehead down. You're still in a slight back bend in the lumbar spine, which is perfect. We'll hold the pose for a total of two minutes. Know that you do have the option to work on the neck if you so choose. Dropping the right ear over towards the right shoulder. Taking a little or a long time, up to you. Check in with the feet, keep pressing them down. And if you're in asymmetry, inhale, lift the crown. And with the exhale, drop the left ear over to the left shoulder. Notice the quality of the breath. And again, if you're in asymmetry, inhale, crown lifts. At this point, we are halfway through our Sphinx Pose, so you might choose to stay as you are if you're content. If you'd like to explore less, recall crocodile, forearms, forehead down, or you can explore your seal pose. Pressing into the palms, thumbs kick forward, four fingers to the right and to the left. Pressure in your hands and you begin to lift your heart, your neck, and your head. Now, if you find this to be painful, easy solution, you come back down into Sphinx. If it feels sustainable, you hold here for the next 60 seconds. Allow the shoulders to roll back and the shoulder blades to squeeze in. Find the breath. Now your breath is going to support your transition. One more inhalation. Exhalation, sway the elbows. Make your way down to prone shavasana. Either pillow the hands or let your arms frame your sides. You can hold still by keeping the tops of the feet down, big toes together and your heels sway wide. Or bend your knees and do a little sway. Wash it away with an easy twist for three. Two. 
and one, let's rise to the table. Before we twist, we'll take cat-cow tilt to wash that away entirely. Inhale, cow pose, drop the belly, center heart, and gaze forward. With your exhale, cat spine. In this first cat pose, make the little cat spine, right? Your deepest expression. Inhale, cow. And exhale to cat. Think medium cat spine, so a little more spaciousness for the back body. One more time, breathing in, soft belly in front ribs. And breathing out, cat spine, your deepest and fullest expression. And pass through a neutral table, recline all the way down to your back body for our supine twist. Eagle legs or in yin practice, this would be called twisted roots. We'll start by crossing the right thigh over the left. This is half. If you have full expression, pass the top of your right foot behind your left ankle. Then drive into your left heel, lift your hips up, drop the hips to the right side of your space. Then the knees drop all the way over to the left. Hips down, the chest opens. Option one, interlace your fingers on your right ribs. Option two, let the arms open, big capital T. To those of you that are taking capital T, send your gaze over to the right, and then soften the eyes, and start to move the breath. In our twisted roots, we will hold for a matter of three minutes, so please keep that in mind as you are establishing your appropriate Feel confident with the idea of being still. You use the tool of conscious breathing. If and when you find the mind wandering, bring the mind back to your intention, to the grounding points of the physical body, to the quality of your breath. At this point, we are halfway through our twisted roots. Again, the breath is going to support your transition. Hold for the inhale, allow the prana to soak into your spine. With your exhale, unwind your legs, slow and steady. As you uncross your right thigh from your left, press into your right foot and bring your hips to low. That same shape that we started with. Symmetrical pose, take supine pentacle, and we'll take a few rounds of breath to observe the sensation. Do you find it to be concentrated somewhere to the right side? Or do you find it to be widespread from the right fingers to the right toes? Just notice the shift and follow the change.
We'll start our setup for second side of twisted roots. Bring a bend into your knees. Bring a bend into your knees and cross your left thigh over your right. Recall that you have two options, half, which is right here, or top of your left foot, left shin, crosses behind the right ankle. Then pressing into the right foot, lift your hips up, scoop your hips to the left, and allow the legs to drop to the right, bringing sensation into the left low back. Interlacing fingers, let your hands rest on the support of your left ribs. Option two, arms open, capital T, fingertip to fingertip. If you took open arms, send the gaze any degree over to the left. Steady the eyes or let them close. And start to hone in on the quality of the breath. benefits of these longer held postures, you become so incredibly aware of the mind states, the habits of your mind and where it goes, what it says and what it's seeking moment to moment. And when you find that you're in that wandering state or fantasy land, you anchor the mind back into the present moment using the tool of body awareness, pranayama or breath manipulation, or breath work, or your intention, your sankalpa, infusing it with your breath as you inhale and exhale. Final 60 seconds on the second side. Now hold for the inhale, let your belly, your rib cage, and your chest expand. Use the exhalation to uncross your left leg. Press into your left foot and scoot your hips back into center, allow the back. And take a full body stretch, let your arms and your legs go long in opposition. Feel the shoulders lift, your abdomen and front body splay and open. In our final series, hug your knees into your chest, apanasana. Just wash that away with a little cradle to the right and to the left. So we can ensure the spine moves in six directions. Take a full body stretch, setting up for banana asana or side body stretching. The visual that you bring to mind is a crescent moon or a banana lying on its side body, <laughs> as if it has a side body. And arms and legs long, 
Guide the limbs all the way over to the right side of your space. Only as far as the left shoulder and your left butt cheek can stay grounded on your mat. If you'd like a little bit more, right hand catches the left wrist or grab opposite elbows. Left ankle crosses over the right, a little more IT band work. And then final detail is sending the gaze over to the left. It's just about 60 seconds on each side. Let's go eight rounds of conscious breathing. When you breathe in, you feel that you're breathing in. And when you breathe out, you feel that you're breathing out. Take a deep breath in. And with your exhale release, come back to center. You'll explore a symmetrical pose of your choice. It can be full body stretching, shavasana, a bridge pose, or a happy baby pose. It might be a number of things or something that I didn't cue up to. Take your time to self-practice for five. Here's four, three, two, and one. Setting up for second side, elongate the limbs in opposition. Banana asana over to the left, inching the limbs to the left side of your space. Recall your options. The left hand can catch the right wrist. The right ankle can cross over the left. If you feel good here, catching opposite elbows, but relax the fingers. Then finally, sending the gaze over to the right. Taking eight rounds of breath. And stay with me as you breathe in. As you breathe out, make your way back to center. And recall a symmetrical pose of your choice. It can be that pentacle shape that we started the practice with, full body stretching. If you want something different this second round, consider apanasana. Consider your plow pose or consider the inversion of your shoulder stand. Wherever you choose to go, let the body breathe for five, four, three, two, and one. And we'll make our way into Shavasana, our final resting pose. And for the sake of this video, we'll hold Shavasana a matter of three minutes. If you would like a shorter or longer Shavasana, feel free to pause this video now, grab your phone, and you can throw a timer on. If you're joining me in a three-minute Shavasana, let your arms and legs go long. Chin release below the forehead. For me, I like a little roll under of the shoulders, propping up the heart space. Just support the settling of your energy as well as the energy in your space. 
In the bottom of the belly, take your time as you breathe in. Open mouth, let go of stent breath. With that, may you enjoy your time and final rest. May you enjoy your time and chosen ease. From your precious state of rest. You take the time to feel your body as it breathes in. Take the time to feel your body as it breathes out. With loving awareness, you deliver a change through the ten fingers and the tongue. And ten toes, a little more aware, a little more connected. As this new wave of free flowing from the energy of life force takes you into a full body stretch as if you were just awakening for the first time today. Bend your knees, press your low back into the ground, right knee to chest, left knee follows. It's a slow roll over to your left side body. We want to roll over to our left, closing off the yin channel of the body, allowing the yang or the heating side of the body to open. This way we move forward from our practice and balance. Without anticipating what's next or what's to come, still present in the practice. As you transition upright, to a comfortable seat. And that's your preference if you take a seat on the heels or cross the ankles. Collecting your hands at your heart space in Anjali Mudra. If you'd like to explore Hakini Mudra, this will support the focus of your mind. Holding space for your personal intention between your two loving hands. Gaze softens, the mind steadies.
In this time in our practice, we acknowledge what is perhaps the most ancient intention of our practice. May all beings be happy. May all beings be healthy. May all beings be safe. May all beings know peace and walk through this life with ease. And my hope for you is that your practice is continuous, your heart steady, and your mind calm. Cleansing the exhale to share the vibration of personal efforts and intention. Smooth and slow, breathe in. Open mouth. And we inhale to chant the sound of OM into the belly, breathe in. With so much love and gratitude to each and every one of you, and we close the practice with a collective bow. Namaste. Be kind to yourself and be kind to others. Thank you guys so much for being here and sharing your practice with me. It was truly my pleasure to guide you through our yin yoga class today. If you enjoyed and you know somebody that would benefit or enjoy the practice, then please share it with them. Truly, when you guys are sharing this content and the classes, it's so, so helpful when you share it with your circles. So from the bottom of my heart, I do appreciate it. And if it's reasonable and realistic, if you could please keep sharing the classes. Again, thank you so much for being here. Have a wonderful day. Be kind to yourself. Be kind to others. And I will see you guys soon. Bye.